Greetings, sculptors, and welcome back. Uh, today, uh, uh, I'm really excited to get started on our one quarter scale sculpture of Jennifer. Uh, this video will be part one in the series uh, and will focus specifically on how to make an appropriate armature for a one quarter scale figure. Okay. Uh, this type of armature is uh, a fairly standard armature. It's good and strong. Uh, I'll talk uh, about some of the reasons why we use this as we go on. Uh, but it is also the same armature that I would use for, or the same style of armature that I would use for a one-third scale figure and possibly a one-half scale figure uh, depending on, um, uh, on the pose. Okay. But it's a, it's, a, it's a great one for, uh, for doing quarter and third scale figures. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than the one that we used for the gesture sketches. Uh, the gesture sketches, if you remember, uh, we made the armature and then the armature was simply uh, screwed into the, um, in, into the bottom of the base. Uh, and this was really good for working on that smaller scale. Uh, going up in scale, right, some of the advantages of going up in scale are that we will be able to achieve greater detail. Right? Um, uh, relative, our hands will seem smaller relative to this larger scale figure than they did with the smaller one. That will enable us to have greater control um, and get uh, um, finer features and details in the finished product. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> uh, but the, uh, the main difference though between this one is that rather than, uh, rather than attaching the, the figure directly to the base, we are going to use a system like this, a black pipe, this is black pipe, uh, we're going to use a system like this in order to suspend the figure uh, from the, the center area, uh, from the torso down. And this will give us greater flexibility in what we do with the legs. Right? So the legs will float free rather than being attached to the base. All right? So uh, first I'd like to go through the, uh, the, the things that you're going to need specifically for this. All right? So uh, we're going to start with our base. Right. We're going to make the same kind of base, uh, and if you are unfamiliar with this, you want, might want to go back and review some of the uh, other um, uh, videos that I've made on uh, either the, the, the small heads, uh, the half-scale heads, or the gesture sketches uh, to get a little bit more information about how to make this. Um, but uh, I have two different boards here. Uh, this one I cut to 14 inches. Um, this one uh, I cut to 11 and a half. Uh, and the reason why I cut it to 11 and a half, normally I would have cut it to 12, but I had a piece of wood that was about 11 and a three quarter inches. So I decided to make it 11 and a half, so it's even. Mm -hmm. um, um, a little different than some of the other ones. Um, I sanded this one a little bit nicer. Uh, you know, when we're doing the gesture sketches, those sort of tend to be like, like simple one day, you know, two, three, you know, three hour projects, maybe a little more for cleanup and whatnot. But a quarter scale figure, this is going to take us uh, quite a bit longer. We're going to work on it a little bit more. So I, I sanded the base a little bit. You know, so I, um, I, I like to make the edges nice and smooth. Um, why is this important? Because working on a longer figure, you're going to be touching this more. Right? So if you have little splinters and things like that, they could, uh, they could kind of get in the way. Right? So I also sand the bottom down. Um, uh, and so it, you can see it'll fit nice and neat there. Um, additionally, with this uh, one also, um, we're going to use a couple of blocks that we're going to put under our pipe. Uh, I will explain a little bit more uh, specifically why we do that. Uh, there are some specific reasons that have to do with the casting process. So if you don't want to add these blocks and you're just planning on modeling something, that's totally fine. But if you have um, aspirations of maybe making a mold and casting this figure at some point in time, uh, you will want to have this extra piece of wood underneath. Right? And again, more explanation as we get into making that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just going through the parts now. Right? So you're going to need to make one of these. Now, for this one, uh, let me check my notes here. Uh, it? Yeah, it's supposed to be a, a, 11 and 3 quarters. And we'll go over why. Um, so I'm making this so that this will be as I measure, uh, this will be 11 and 3 quarters uh, in total height. Right? So right now it's about 11, but when I add one of these, or we're going to get the number that we want. Right? So when you go to the store to purchase pipe like this, right, this pipe comes in a number of different sizes. Right? It's very flexible. It's like in a, a sort of a rector set for sculpture armature. Right? We've got all these different parts that can do lots of different things. Right? So uh, the goal, though, is to have this pipe coming out of a nice flat area in her back, right? If, you, if she's here like this on a crease, you don't want that pipe coming out at a detail section, 
right? You don't want the pipe coming out right in the, in the center of the division of the legs. Um, you know, good areas, depending on the size, can sometimes be the side of the hip or the glute because um, the hip or the glute are going to be uh, um, you know, nice big flat areas that'll be easy to repair in a, uh, in a, in a casting. Um, usually the back of the lat, sort of here, right? You can imagine here, so, right? This is, this little piece of pipe here is one quarter of an inch. So this is a one inch pipe. So you can imagine this would be then coming out of her back about here, okay? Mm -hmm. So that nicely comes out like that. <clears throat> Right. So it comes in all different sizes. Uh, this, is, this is one quarter inch pipe right here, and this one is half inch. So you can notice I'm, I'm, I'm reducing it down because I could just have a half inch. You need the half inch pipe to get the kind of the stability that we're gonna want here. Um, but you, you, you're gonna want the part that's actually um, uh, connected to her to be as small as possible, right? And so that's this nice one quarter inch one. Right. Um, and you want it, I, I like about this length because we're going to send it out into the middle because we want to be able to have room around here to get our hands and to sculpt. Okay. So what we have here basically, just to go over the parts and take them apart and I'll put them all back together. Right. This is a one quarter inch T. Right. It's a T and what that does is when we put it on here you can see that gives us the ability to thread our wires through here. Right. So that's that part. This is a six inch long, one quarter inch pipe. Six inches long. This little guy, which I can't get out, is a little reducer. Now, this one here, you notice, is brass. Sometimes you can find the, this reducer in, um, uh, in, in the black uh, iron pipe. Uh, one thing I want to mention about the black pipe, real quick. Uh, the black pipe, this is black pipe. At the, at the section of the hardware store where they sell black pipe, they will also sell galvanized pipe, right? Um, it's the same thing. If you can't find a part you're looking for, you can use the galvanized pipe. But what I would say about it is the galvanized pipe is going to be much more expensive, right? S considering you're not gonna be leaving this outside, uh, it's not gonna get rusty. You don't need the galvanized. The galvanization protects uh, from rust. Um, just simple black pipe is gonna be the cheaper of the two. Um, Sometimes you can find this little reducer uh, in, um, in, in the black pipe version, but sometimes I can't find that, and so I, I have to go to another section of the plumbing area and get this little tiny brass one. Right? So if you show somebody at the hardware store this picture, they'll know where this piece is. Right? Um, it's a little harder to find. Um, I'm gonna use the brass one because I think it looks cooler. I kinda like the way the brass looks against the black. I'm an art guy, so I can that's This is an elbow. Right, this elbow, uh, this elbow specifically, and you can kind of maybe you can read that. Right, you can see on one side it says half inch, and the other says three eighths. So that's what this reducer does. This reducer is taking this down to three eighths, and then the inside of the reducer is one quarter, and that allows us to thread in a one quarter piece into this larger section. Right? Right, otherwise, that wouldn't fit. Now, I'm showing you all of this in this way because there are a number of different ways. When you go to the hardware store and you're looking at it through the section where they have all of these different uh, parts, sort of there'll be all these different racks of little boxes and there are lots of different ways that you can put this together. Uh, I have a tendency to do it in this way uh, because this works for the things that I do. Uh, but uh, um, anyways, <clears throat> this, is a this is a half inch, uh, this one doesn't have a sticker on it, um, usually they have a stick, uh, sometimes they have a sticker on them. Uh, uh, this is a half inch um, pipe and it is 10 inches long, right? And then a half inch flange, all right? So we'll put all that back together, put that in, and put our piece on here. Using the brass one, because it looks cool. Now you might notice that I'm, I, I'm doing it all hand tight. Uh, I do not like to use uh, tools. Like, and once, I, once I get this on there, I can get it pretty tight. I do not like to use tools in order to really cinch this down. If I were to put a set of pliers on this, um, and you know, even just these, which you shouldn't use needle nose for this, but a, but a wrench on here, and really crank it down here, I could get this really sort of really solid and tight. I don't like doing that because when I cast this piece, right, so let's say that we take this to casting, this piece will be embedded in all of our clay. I'll want to be able to take this off and unthread this to remove this 
uh, at a later point in time. And if you overly cinch it down, uh, you'll end up damaging your clay when you try to remove it, or you might have to cut it off or something like, something like that. So I, I keep them kind of you know, tight, but loose enough that I can use it with my hand, hand strength, I can get them off. So, so tight, right, tight, right, but not so tight that you can't get it apart. Right? That's actually very important. All right, so that's our, our black tight pieces. Right? Uh, um, oh, and then the final piece that we will need is our aluminum wire. Right? And as mentioned before in the gesture sketching video, uh, there is description on how to acquire this at the lowest possible uh, price. But uh, um, you know, obviously, uh, you can you can use any kind of wire. Um, other little sort of extra incidentals, uh, we're gonna uh, well we'll need some screws. And right? again, remember uh, to attach a half inch to a half inch. Uh, I mean, to, <laughs> sorry. Uh, to attach three quarters of an inch to three quarters of an inch, right? That produces an inch and a half of thickness. So we use uh, a one and one quarter inch screw, right? Because one and one inch quarter. That way, when we when we drive it in, it won't stick through. You know? So there's uh, those. Uh, obviously, you need something to put your screws in. You could use anything. You could use a, a, a old school screwdriver. Works fine. Uh, but if you have a driver, that's better. Um, some pliers for bending things around. So uh, a ruler, something to measure. Uh, our total height is going to only be, um, oh, there's a 15.5. So this ruler is, is more than sufficient because it's an 18 inch long ruler. Um, and then last but not least, uh, you will need some notes, right? So uh, I will provide with the, um, uh, um, the model set in, in a, in a Dropbox folder or wherever, uh, I will uh, I will provide these these exact numbers on here. So my notes. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that's that's the materials you need. Uh, let's get started. All right. Cleaned up my work area. Rolled my sleeves up. It's time to assemble this thing and uh, uh, make the put all these parts together. All right. So first things first. Over there for a second. And if you recall, uh, I had to grab a bigger ruler because this is a little bit bigger. And so on my 14 inch piece here, and you know, you, you don't have to use an exact 14 inch piece. I, I, I'm a little bit particular in my sort of, uh, you know, how I do things because that's just sort of the way I am. You know, so, um, you know, I like, I like the math to be really tight. Uh, um, if you know anything about my personal work, um, the math and the numbers on all my figures are all very specific. Uh, and and that's, that's sort of my thing. So uh, I like things to be nicely lined up. A nice way to quickly line up your, uh, your, uh, your, the bottom of your base is right? so to just make a big X. Right? And then if you put all the corners on the area, uh, they will be nice and equidistant. Right? And that, that just makes me happy. So. Now you could, just, you could just slam it on in any way and it would be totally fine. Right? I'm gonna draw, drive a couple of screws, right? Uh, you know, I wanna make sure it's sitting nice and flat. There's no anything in between. Remember, we wanna drive our screws in just a little bit further. Because, let's see how that lifted up a little bit. Pull that out. And we wanna drive them in just a little bit further so that when you're working on this, maybe on your uh, your your parents' dining room table, or you know, on your your favorite desk, or, or just wherever you're working. Right? If you have a screw that's sticking uh, out the bottom, uh, you're going to end up scratching your table. Right? And afterwards, I can maybe run that through. Okay. And remember, um, I have a model stand that moves around. Uh, that is not, uh, I do not expect that other people have that. But remember that uh, you can always just put uh, a, a, a washcloth down and then this will slide very easily. It won't slide on this because this is rough. But uh, that will slide around very nice and nicely on a nice table that you may or may not have. Put that down there. All right. so. You know, again, remember, uh, we put this bottom edge on because this is more important because this sculpture is going to be heavier. 
right? Those little gesture sketches that we worked on, um, they weren't very heavy and they were easy to pick up, but uh, we were working. But this enables us to always be able to get down. Now, again, I, I work towards you know the idea that uh, that that we might. Um, that we might cast this at some point. So you get this figure up here, it's gonna add a certain amount of weight. They put a bunch of mold material on it and it's gonna get really heavy really quick. So uh, you will very much appreciate that feature uh, over time. And you have to, you kind of have to make a few uh, mistakes in order to, uh, to learn all that. You, know? so you gotta make one on a face that's not very helpful. Now I want, right, so again, uh, I said that this, this we want to be I think I wanted it to be at. I got two pages of notes here. Uh, yes, I want the total height right, to be at about 12 and a half. Okay? So now when I put these two blocks right here and this, and I hold my ruler up there, maybe you guys can see that, I'm right at about the top, um, just a little below 12 and a half. All right, so I am happy with that. All right. In addition to that, I also want to plan. So I want to plan where my figure is going to be. I don't, I don't want to be modeling like I don't want my figure over here on my stand. All right. I want my figure in the in the center as best as as possible. And again, and I want to be able to get. That's why we have this nice long pipe here. All right. So I had already figured out some of the math on this. So that's going to put my figure kind of standing right about here. If this is here, okay. So you see how I'm doing that, and that, that kind of puts the figure right about in the middle uh, as as best as I can. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be crazy about it. Right. So what I'm going to do, I could bring this over. I'm going to give a little bit of kind of margin there. And I'm going to screw this guy in right in. Moved a little there, but we can just kind of move that back. This drill makes that loud noise because it's an impact driver, so um, uh, it actually has a, it like kind of hammers the thing around and get it to go a little bit tighter. Uh, that's what that noise is. That's not to be confused with the noise of stripping the screw. So that. That noise is coming from there. You know, it's kind of an irritating tool, but a, a, a very useful for driving your screws in. Right. I want to put the second one on the top, and again, I'm just using the inch and a quarter screws. I could do something longer if I wanted to, but this will work just fine. Right. And, and then as I you know go through them, that that's that feels solid. That's not going anywhere. Right. So now. If you try to put your uh, your, uh, your 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 flange on like this, right? You sometimes have a hard time with the driver, right? So, uh, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take this off, and then again, because I like things centered and nice and neat in a particular way, we'll also do that same trick of making an X on this. You can notice that the edges of my thing are all, I, I pre-sanded all of these, right? So it's nice and, nice and smooth. So if I, if I hit that, I'm not getting little splinters or anything. Now, if I hold this on here, right, so say we can, well, I can't see if I can get this kind of over to the camera. You can see how you can see the, the lines through the circles uh, and that will allow you to sort of nicely sort of put that on there. Because there's going to be a pipe and I might want to remove this, I'm not going to drive these screws straight down. I'm going to drive them at a little bit of an angle. And that will enable me to, uh, to be able to get this off if I want to. So I'm going to come down straight and then a little bit of an angle. That might seem kind of funny because you might be thinking, wait, Eric, that's you normally want everything to be all perfect. And, yeah. right, so a little bit of an angle is gonna, gonna make my life easier down the road. Again, if I choose 
to, if I choose to, to cast this. So I've had, I've, I've had problems in the past um, when I was starting out, I'm not making armatures in a way that, uh, that was, that was uh, good for the casting process. But, and tight, but not too tight. I don't know. Should I go around one more time? Yeah, yeah I'm going to go around one more time. Tight, but not so tight that I can't get that loose if I didn't want to, right? right. And then this one, again, tight, but not so tight I can't get done. And if anything, I lose leave this one. See, see how I want to? It's kind of hard to see here, but see how I can still kind of move that a little bit, right? Okay. All right, and then I'm going to kind of look down here and kind of position it kind of in the center. I think it works. Okay. All right. All right, so now I have my wood. I have my pipe. All right, I'm feeling it. It feels nice and good and solid. I'm going to put on a pair of gloves because even though I washed this wire, right, I washed this wire before, but, um, uh, if you, but I haven't sprayed it yet. So what we will do is I will, I'm just gonna wear the gloves because I just better be safe and sorry. You know, and uh, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna assemble this all on here to the part, right? And then afterwards I'll give it a spray with the, uh, with the clear acrylic to just sort of you know, make sure it's nice. Okay, so let's jump into this. Okay. So, uh, the main numbers that we need, right? Uh, we know that we want our total height to be 15.5, right? So Jennifer is, um, is 62 inches, right? So she's 62 inches uh, in height. She's actually about uh, five foot four, but in the pose that we're doing, right? She, she sinks down a little bit. So her total height was approximately 62 inches, right? Um, and we know that we're gonna want a couple of inches um, I'm going to measure everything for two, uh, a couple of inches of base at the bottom. So that means that we have to have a total height of approximately uh, 17.5 inches. Okay, so I'm going to stick this down in here. I'm going to go all the way down like this, all the way down. And I'm going to put on a little curly cue for the head. And if you recall, I, I like to think of this head kind of like a um, uh, kind of like a fern. Right? You know how a fern kind of kind of grows out and it kind of rolls out. And right? so I make the, this little roll in here because if I needed to extend that out for whatever reason, um, I can gradually, you know, I can remove the clay and then I can unroll it and still have material. Right? It's always easier to remove material from an armature than it is to add material to an armature. Right? So keep that in mind. Right? So I'm measuring up. So that right there, you won't be able to see my numbers, but you just trust me. That is 17.5. Right? So I want that to be my total height. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around here. I'm going to stick this guy back down in through. I gotta hold that right now, but you'll see this in a minute. You can see this sort of curly cue went down, went back through, right, and then gave it a little bit of a wrap. Right, so remember, this is going to be kind of floating right about here. That 42 inches is going to sit up on her at about the 12 and a half mark, right? So, um, so this is kind of about right here inside of her. And we got to be careful with this because we, we don't want to, you know, this, this area on her is going to be only about eight inches wide, right? Maybe a little bit, more like seven and a half. Right, so that's seven and a half, let's say eight, eight inches, right, divided by four is two, it's, it's less than two inches. So we gotta make sure that, that this all stays, right, 
you have two inches, this all stays within this kind of space, right? And doesn't, and doesn't get too big and get, get, get too far away from us. Okay? So this is now gonna be, and now this is going to become one of our legs. We'll use that later. Okay. All right, so our next measurement uh, is going to be the pit of the neck. Okay? So remember, we want the arms to start below the pit of the neck. So the pit of the neck sits at 13, which means the pit of the neck will sit at 13 plus 2 is 15, and we need this to be lower than that. Right? Uh, in addition to that, we know that Jennifer is, uh, is um, about 62 inches high. Uh, she's a little bit more because she's, uh, but um, if she was standing, she'd be 5'4", but about 62 inches. But this is the same distance, right? So this also needs to be 62, right? So that same 15.5, uh, which is, is, is about 8 in, a, a little bit more than I'm just gonna go with eight inches. No, so let's just do that. Okay, All right, so that's about eight inches of material. I know this seems like a lot of math, but it's actually really, really important. It's really, really important because um, you know when you're making when you're getting ready to make a work of art of any type, if you will, right? When you're getting ready to make a work of art, uh, there's there's so many uh, things that you have to plan for. Now, now granted, you can just kind of jump in and, and sort of do whatever. Right? There's, there's no doubt you can do that. Right? So I'm going to go around this way. I should have dropped that in. this down like that. And that's going to become the other way. Right? There's so many things that you need to, to, to plan out. And the more planning you do, the better it's going to be. Right? Um, so, you know, with a drawing, right, you know that if you want to do a drawing, right, you know you want to do a drawing that's a bit, this big, you don't go and find yourself an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Right? It's just not going to fit. You have to have the appropriate size. Now, sometimes with a, with a drawing, if you make it too big uh, or make the, uh, the paper too big, you can always crop it. Right? So that's, that's, not, um, that's not an issue with a, piece, with a single piece of paper or with something that's digital. You can always expand it. But if you were doing a traditional painting and you make the canvas a particular size, although it's not impossible, right? You can, there are ways to add to a canvas. Um, although it's not impossible, um, it's very, very difficult to add to it. So same with the, with the armature for a sculpture. If you don't make it right the first time, it just really, really makes your life really, really difficult, right? And there's, and there's no need for that, okay? Right, so that's that. And so this is basically the same process that we did before. Right. I'm drop this one through here. Right. Down to here. Right. Down to that leg. Right. And then I'm going to bring this back around in this one. I don't even need to measure that because I can just bring these two things together. All of a sudden, there's one leg. Okay. This long one here. I'm going to go back down. Sometimes on this level, it gets a little hard to kind of get the, the wire to go through. This one's trying to scratch my back. I'm not going to be able to get the wire through. There we go. I like to get as many of them kind of through as possible. Just kind of better. 
And let's get that same amount down as that. All right, now this one's going to come around and go back up to that first arm. Right? And it only needs to be about the same length as that arm. Just need to go longer. Right. Same techniques that we used before. Right. Twist these two guys together. Remember, we want to twist them evenly because areas down like our ankles, right, which are going to be very thin, right, they'll be thicker on the quarter scale figure than they were on the one six scale gesture figure. Right? They will be thicker, but we don't want to have problems. Right? Right? So by, by twisting them evenly, you'll get a nice even thickness in here. If you twist them unevenly, they'll be high, low, high, low, high, low. Right? So we talked about that before. Again, okay, I'm going to take one of these kind of shorter leftover pieces here. This is that back and forth as I'm kind of going up, but it's okay on the neck because the neck is got plenty of thickness there. Trim that. Come on about there. Around. Roll that one back in in the same way. So we got a nice little sort of like clump of stuff there to hold our head form. Two separate legs. Right, so our, 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 our other measurement I didn't I didn't show you, but our other measurement that I have for doing these is uh, is 29 inches. So the bottom of our groin sits at 29 inches. Right. So that means uh, divided by four is 7.25. 7.25 plus two. Right. Plus two uh, is 9.25. So the bottom of her groin will sit right about here, right about where my finger is. Right? So you can see that we have, uh, we have the armature coming up to about here. We've got this big mass of stuff going on here. Uh, comes up to about here and then splits off. Right? So her shoulders will sit about here and here. Right? And because of the way we constructed this, we will be able to, uh, we will be able to adjust that. Right? So we have a lot of adjustment in there. Got some excess in our legs here. I'm going to just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that kind of like this because I'm gonna spray it in a few minutes. Now you might notice it's a little bit wiggly. Now before we go on, what I'm going to do, the end here, uh, actually, uh, well I can just use this. Usually I use a screwdriver, but I'm gonna take a couple of screws, and what I do is I just kind of, maybe you can see that a little bit. I just kind of put a couple of screws in there, and it, it as the screw goes down, it kind of tightens everything up. Um, and actually makes it almost sort of impossible to get that kind of out, but it jams all that material kind of together. So see how there's, there's, there's no movement there now. Mm -hmm. So uh, before we kind of go on, I can sort of you know, kind of compress any of these areas in here. I can see a little bit extra. And maybe I want to make sure I can get this little section here back up onto the section here and I'm just gonna compress that a little bit so it's actually I'll probably do it on the screw in the bottom there. Just in there. Not much. I even go in on, I'm gonna go in on a little bit of an angle here too. Because then it hits the threads of the 
It hits the threads on the inside, um, and then the, the uh, All right, so so this is a very appropriate armature for uh, for what it is that we're going to be doing. I'm going to take this over and spray it with a little bit of clear acrylic, uh, and then uh, we'll be ready to start putting some clay on it.